Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player, and welcome to episode 30 of the Novid Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators inside of the VR chat platform. I'm your host, and today I have with me the captain of the Mythos Makers team, comic illustrator, 2D animator, and VR chat creator, John Coday. John, welcome to the podcast. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? I'm so honored to have the 30 spot. Screw everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> this is mine now. <laughs> Fair. So, John, uh, first and foremost, like for the general listening audience at home, uh, what exactly do you do, you know, in VR chat? Oh, God. Uh, well, the main thing that I do in VRChat that I'm known for is uh, meme avatars. So as if you want to call me Discount Cyberchimp, there you go. Um, <laughs> but uh, that that's kind of the main thing that I do. I started it like eons ago, uh, doing it a little bit small with a couple of buddies because I, I did get insp inspired by Cyberchimp. And so I started it then and over time just continued doing it. There's many, there's three different iterations of the Fox now, and then just uh, whatever weird cartoon absurdity that I come up with. <laughs> Fair enough. So, you know, you, you said you were doing it for, you know, eons, as you said. Um, so what, in general, kind of what got you started into VR chat in general? Uh, I think actually legit was watching Cyberchimp. Uh, I start I started watching a little bit of his content because I'd known about VR chat before. I just never played it. Like beforehand, I had done a lot of VR stuff within uh, the Beat Saber and Synth Riders community. I'd done a lot of stuff uh, with them. And then I just happened upon a lot of Cyberchimp uh, videos. And it was like, this is really interesting. And at the time I had quite a bit of uni experience working on shenanigans. And so I was just like, huh. Let me see if I can try this. And so I got into VR chat. I started trying a bunch of different things with avatars. And uh, and then it just... I started meeting a few people. Met some of my uh, first few friends through there. A French Frog and Shiro and Ineko. Shout out. Um, <laughs> and, and then through them, met more people. And then continued meeting people until I'm basically where I'm at today. Fair enough. So, yeah, you've been, you know, doing the whole meme avatar stuff. Um, so out of curiosity, what kind of led you into, you know, going into the Unity side and, you know, further progressing into the meme avatar side of VR chat? Um, I mean, like I said, I had Unity experience before because at the time I was working on uh, Shenanigans, a 2D platform ga game that I've released. Um, and so I had already been like doing stuff in unity so then it was like okay like it makes sense to at least try it and see how it goes because this looks interesting and i felt like i could at least try a few different try at least my hand and see what all i could come up with and for the most part as it continued on it got more looney tunes than i expected but i mean i'm not complaining i love looney tunes so there we go um <laughs> it's fair so. um so I guess, you know, as, as an avatar creator, um, what was like one of the most, you know, difficult or at least one of the struggles when it comes to, you know, making avatars or like putting stuff onto avatars? Uh, just figuring things out. I mean, even like at the beginning, things like world constraints was like, just trying to Google everything and just being like, how in the world do I do this? And even now that's still a struggle of just like, how do I do like this weird, obscure thing? Like there, there's one idea that I had not too long ago, actually, that I ended up having to scrap because it was like, I needed to try and find a way to like replace someone's textures with, uh, or like have an area towards like textures would be like one color. And I couldn't figure that out. So I was just like, I'm going to move on. I've spent too much time on this. <laughs> I know it can be done. I just don't know how to do it quite yet. Of course. I'll say as somebody who's like learning Unity, I 
totally understand that, you know, constantly going to YouTube, typing in like, how do I do this without, you know, screwing everything up, you know, <laughs> and some trailers from, or not trailers, but some like, you know, tutorials will be good from like four or five years ago. And then some of them will just be obsolete and it doesn't work with the the newer unities. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think especially with a lot of things changing, like with the, the latest update that came out not too long ago uh, with uh, the VRC constraints, uh definitely is gonna make it a little bit interesting but they mostly work about the same as unity constraints so i'm not too worried yeah i and there's actually been some releases in regards to that um uh there was actually i don't remember the name uh post editor will throw it up on the screen but there was somebody who made like an asset pack um you know for like using the new vrc constraint system um so i'm definitely curious as to oh. how i'm definitely curious as to how people will progress because you know as as you know you know yeah. being one of those creators who did it before these you know it's it takes some getting used to to get into a system of you know okay this is how you you know put this in the world and it won't move anywhere you this know world constraints <laughs> exactly yeah you know parent constraints world constraints all that jazz but now it's all like vrc constraints now you know so and it's one still of the new funniest things i accidentally did with one of my early avatars is on one this is for all of you who don't know how to do unity Good luck following. I put um, all of my animations in just one uh, animation layer, all of my, like, left and right gestures. And so anytime I did, like, two gestures at once, you just see objects, like, splitting in and out, going back and forth. And, like, that's not right. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. <laughs> ah. Ah. I was not prepared for a seizure this afternoon. Let me go back to the drawing board. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's it's definitely interesting. I, I'm I, as somebody you know who loves to talk about these types of things uh, with creators. Like, I'm very excited to see how people can progress. Um, you know, whether it's you know a lot easier for a lot of people to make these types of you know animations and stuff, or if it's still as difficult as it was. Um, you know. Oh God. <laughs> it's a uh, with an with animations it's very because like you could have there's like two different like in my head at least like there's two different uh types of avatars there's avatars that like you can do a lot of small stuff with and then there's avatars that are just one big continuous thing that you have to sit through the entire thing a perfect example of that is and i'm probably gonna make it again um a uh, after that, I call Welcome to the Internet. It's basically not the whole song, but, like, the first part of the song. And there's, like, all sorts of things that appear. I, like, have pictures and stuff that I pull out. I have some objects. Like, I pull out a bomb at some point, throw it behind me. Um, and then there's, like, two screens that, like, come up behind me that are showing, like, like the most, like, overstimulating stuff on the screen so that then it's like emphasizing this is the internet we will overstimulate your mind with just content so it's just those types of avatars where it's like it's just those continue but those animations are pretty difficult at least initially because what i initially did was to time all of those things coming up i would like in audacity or something i would like go to that part and be like, okay, this happens at like this second. So then go into unity, go to that second, do what I need to all that. And then did that back and forth until eventually a friend of mine smashed her. Um, finally was like, stop doing that. Here's a plugin that whenever you play the animation, it will play the audio as well. You just have to plug in the audio. And I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> that's made these types of avatars so much easier now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Plugins are, oh man, plugins are such, such a nice thing. <laughs> like they make things so much easier <laughs> nine times out of 10. Um, so with that, so out, out of curiosity, um, you know, since you're in VR, I don't know if you know the exact number, um, but out of curiosity, how many avatars have you done? Oh, in my uploaded section, and this also this also includes scrapped avatars or even like my chill avatars, uh, is at one eighty one right now. 
holy cow. And so, that's a lot. That's a lot. I, I know people that are in the 400s to 500s. I, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> like, bro, I have like eight, maybe, maybe nine. I, I'd have to double check. But, <laughs> but no, that's uh, like even thinking like past 20 is like, you know, that's a crazy thing to say the least. Um, I was gonna mm-hmm. say, so with that, so when, uh, when was like the first, um, woo, hello, like spikes. Uh, so when was like the first one that like kind of started it off? The first avatar I uploaded was, uh, 4 2021. <laughs> So it was just a little over three years. Three years ago. A little over three years ago. That's crazy. Dear man. God. I <laughs> the realization just really kicked in for me, which is like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um yeah, I'll say there's definitely a lot of probably memories and reactions when it comes to that. Um Oh yeah. You know, so how does it feel now that you kind of had the realization that you you started this like, you know, relatively over three years ago now? Oh, my God. So much happened within that time. <laughs> <laughs> like legit like that during that time when I started, I think I lived in Kansas City at the time. I lived in Kansas City at the time and then I moved into a different city in Oklahoma and then from there, I then also moved again here recently. So I've been through, like, I'm in, like, three houses since I've started doing avatars. That's insanity to me. I would say, yeah, that's, yeah, a lot could happen in three years. Like, that's, that's crazy oh to think God. about. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to make you have that realization, but, you know. <laughs> no, yeah, that, you're fine. That was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> um but yeah so i never thought about that until now (laughs) oh it's always good to you know reflect on that sometimes um you know i was to say in that regard um so what is something you know in your opinion what would you take from like modern day vr chat and take it back to back then when you first started i i think probably the old the old like quick start menu, I think, because there were, you could get a lot more stuff out of it. Because <laughs> I I remember like that. Like the thing about it is it is that I started VR chat sometime in 2021. I think would have whenever I started. So it would have it would have been like early 2021 whenever I did start. And so it would probably like I I think I joined at the tail end of the old nameplates, and then also the old uh, quick menu. So, and what I'm talking about is, like, whenever you hit, like, the button, you got the launch pad, and you've got, like, the eight buttons. Uh, I think I think the old one had, like, 12 or so buttons. And so you could get to a lot more stuff a lot quicker. Yeah. So I think that would probably be the only thing is, like, the old, like, format of that. Other than that, like, the way that they've got the new avatar menu, well, so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So much better. I wish you could search for avatars. That's my only that's my only request. VRC devs, can we search for avatars? That's my only request. <laughs> well, I would say I think that would benefit like <laughs> me and a few others so much. Fair. I'll say at <laughs> least now, like, you know, we have, you know, worlds like Prismix, you know, because it wasn't yeah. always it wasn't always like that, you know. Um and Greth, they're still like amazing avatar worlds that are being made almost on a daily basis you know but ah oh man i yeah. uh i'm gonna I mean it's like whenever you like whenever you go into like your uh whenever like you go into like your uploaded avatars and then there's just a box there to be able to like search throughout your avatars that you have like either favorited or uploaded or whatever oh so, fair. you can't do that right now so true so, yeah because it's like it's like oh my gosh it's like, like i need to go back to this old after <laughs> <laughs> true though sometimes hey, you, you go over get and on it's it. like no and you have to catch it and then go back up <laughs> like, ah. yeah 
I say I thought I actually had to do that not too long ago. Whenever uh, I was doing, I was doing like a, a what I call Jerry's uncle avatar, where she's like, Whoa, I've got a guitar and everything, and it was like, oh, and again, to just flip through so many avatars, <laughs> gotta get to the one that, that I was, was looking, looking for. for. It's just like, oh no, that's my only <laughs> request right now. Fair, yeah, no, I agree. VRC devs, if any of y'all are listening to this, get on that. That's a that's a fire idea right there. Like, I didn't, even, I didn't, even th- I don't, because you don't normally, as a regular VR chat player, you don't really think of that, right? You know, you're just enjoying the game. You're like, oh, yeah. When favorite. you have six avatars, you don't think about that. <laughs> when you have 181, you're doing this, and you're like, good lord. <laughs> No, absolutely. Um, so I guess in that regard, like whoever's watching me right now is thinking this is a hell of a jack off session. Like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening here. Fair, valid. Um, Even doing this, like sitting here, my arm is getting like sore. Like just doing that here, and it's like, good lord. Definitely a workout to say the least. Definitely a workout. Um. Yeah, Get both arms, and so then you'll be able to go faster. <laughs> yeah, just put uh, both of the quick. Just... I don't even know if that works. I uh, say, well, it probably does because, like, with the new like VRC menu, you can like customize the little side panels. So, like, if you really wanted to, oh, you yeah. can have both avatars and just go, <laughs> like, just, just, <gasps> <laughs> it's just monkey noises. In. <laughs> oh my gosh, I could not, I could see it now. <laughs> just somebody, like, you get uh, somebody who has horrible. four or five hundred avatars. The just... vision, <laughs> the vision I saw, it's horrible. <laughs> Fair. Or at least to where, like, you know, if if people have, like, a certain threshold of avatars, you can make folders for, like, avatars, and you can, like, organize them that way. That, oh. <laughs> that would probably be nice, too. You know, that's... This one's going in the cringe one? <laughs> yeah, you got dank memes, you got cringe, you got... Uh, fan service. Uh, I mean, no, you don't hear that. Um, anyway. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I, think mo- I think most of us would end up like most of me versus potentially chips having a folder called meat canyon because a lot of us do stuff on him <laughs> true i'll say yeah there's a lot of good content from meat canyon that can definitely be used for vr um as cursed as some of them I'm are working on right now <laughs> an avatar i'm working on right now which i'm surprised no one else has unless i'm just don't remember uh is, is uh the xqc uh meat canyon uh one i'm working on that right now i'm gonna be wrapping up i think i'm gonna be wrapping up uh rigging tonight because i don't know why that video it just lives rent free in my head it's <laughs> lived rent free in my head for about the past year of just just him just going like they're trying to take my treasure i mean not that i needed not that i not that i need a chat but it's my it's my it's my gold it's my treasure chat i'm gonna have to throw that up on the screen now that's wild meat canyon please don't take my video down now that i've done that please don't take my video down meat canyon i love you <laughs> just I, I I gotta reference that somehow. You make great content, form. Meat Canyon. <laughs> Chet, I got your views, Chet. My views, no, Chet. Not that I need the Chet, but it didn't mind them. <laughs> Fair. Um, but yeah, so I was gonna say because you know, there's so many different things. Like, uh, out of curiosity, which one was like your fa- your personal favorite in like making, or one that maybe you use like on a frequent basis oh it changes a lot um especially going from different versions of the fox so there's the first version of the fox which i had a uh, commission way back when and then eventually i got uh, better at modeling so then i ended up doing my own which is fox 2.0 and in that i think the one that i liked to perform but was a lot to do was welcome to the internet for a while uh just because it's a fun one to perform uh and it also would get a lot of laughs a lot of people did enjoy that a couple one of the more or no one that surprised me the most during the 2.0 era was an avatar that's just labeled ostrich which is a uh 
which is just the audio from a video of Slime Sickle reading from WikiHow, uh, or the article from WikiHow, How to Be an Ostrich. <laughs> Fair. That's a wiki how. Look it up. It's real. Uh, <laughs> That's absolutely. I thought crazy. because I had that at the same time as that avatar, I also had a avatar of Kane from the Amazing Digital Circus, and a part of me was like, I think Ostrich is going to tank. That avatar did really well with people, so I was, that really surprised me. Which is like, huh. That did a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> Fair. So I think that was the that was the last Fox 2.0 avatar I did. And then going into 3.0, one that I recently really like to perform is um, one called Cowboy, to where it's just like, um, especially particularly just being like, and he's here to do some business with the big iron on his hip. And I just pull out like either a revolver with the stupid as long as barrel or an actual clothing iron that is way too big, mostly way too big on accident. <laughs> I don't know how the scaling messed up on it, but it was way too big. And then a recent one that I've been enjoying is uh, one that's just labeled fridge, which is like, my fridge is cursed. And it's just like, going through, it's like most of the time it's fine, but every now and then it has a portal to another dimension. But even rare, I get someone's food delivery. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I was gonna say, uh, there's definitely, definitely some interesting, definitely some interesting things, and there'll be stuff on the screen throughout the episode. Um, but yeah. I was gonna say, you know, I guess one of my other questions, um, granted, I, I, I believe I already know the answer, but just for like the general listening audience uh, who may not know. Uh, so what kind of, you know, makes you make decisions on, like, what avatars you want to make? Whatever I find funny. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the dumbest thing that one night I'm just chuckling at for no particular reason. One avatar that is the perfect example of that is the 3.0 era one that is just labeled hold this. I just appear out of nowhere with a stick of dynamite. I stand in front of someone and say, here, hold this. They grab it, it, I make it stay there, and I just walk off, and either one or two things will happen. I either come back, grab it, say thanks, walk off, or it explodes on them. Fair. <laughs> just one night, that was really entertaining to me. So that bit, that bit specifically comes from uh, ASCF movies. There is a bit, it's one of the early ones, where it's just someone just walks in, does that, walks up to someone, hands them a bomb, and says, here, hold this, walks off. About like four seconds pass, he comes back and he's like, thanks, and just takes it back. And it's, it's just one of those bits to me that's just like, I laugh at it way too much, so I do it. The other criteria is um, how cartoonish can I make it? Not all avatars are super cartoonish, um, but some uh, are. And so then it's just a matter of just like how much Looney Tunes can I potentially uh, fit into this <laughs> no that's fair i was gonna say because you know I, I i've seen a handful of them firsthand um you know whether it be via your streams or like just the very you know few times we've interacted um definitely definitely some interesting interesting stuff to say the least um it's essentially like because there's so many different types of memes out there right um mm -hmm. unfortunately a lot of it's brain rot. I'm sorry. But like ASDF movie, like classic, <laughs> like like you, you got your classics, and then you got your brain most, rot. Most of the memes out there cause your brain cells to just collapse. That's <laughs> <laughs> basically what I heard. Yeah. I mean, they're good. They're, they're <laughs> like, I mean, they get a good laugh for sure. Um, so. Yeah, I was going to say with that, so kind of to 180 the topic a little bit. So you also are the, as I said in the intro, you are the captain of the Mythos Makers. So for the general listening audience, what exactly is Mythos Makers? Uh, well, Mythos Makers is kind of a all-encumbersome kind of company slash platform for like multimedia stuff. So some of the main few things that we do is um, comics. Uh, we're current. We've got some video games that are out, uh, including Shenanigans. 
Um, and then we are also working on larger video projects. So we have some video stuff, but not very much. And so right now, the main thing that we're working on um, as of right now is a 2D animated, uh, just basically a cartoon of shenanigans. So it's taking the characters from the shenanigans game and making a cartoon out of them because they're probably going to work really well in that format or because that's mostly what they were designed for is more of a cartoony format. So so that's currently what we're working on. We're working on episode one right now. So most most of the voices are done and animation is going on right now. So, But most of it's rough animation. <laughs> Fair. Um, I guess to kind of, you know, kind of add on to it, um, so what, what all types of media do you guys like cover when it comes to mythos makers? Yeah. I mean, most of that we're wanting to kind of see what we can experiment with. Like I said, the main, like the main few things are like comics, video games, and, uh, online videos. So, and a lot of our online videos are probably going to be like mostly like on YouTube and stuff like that, because YouTube is just already a good platform. A lot of people already are on it and all that kind of stuff. But for, like, on our website, we have our um, comics. So there's, like, my comic uh, that is on there, or both of my comics on there, uh, Sierra Bell, The Magic's Curse, and The Tale of Kaikaku. And then another one of our comic artists, uh, ZM Art, uh, has two of his comics on there, uh, Project Valkyrie and um, Dungeon Henshin. So those are two comics that uh, he's doing. We're wanting to get more stuff, but we're still, like, a really small group. Uh it's been around for a while, but we're still just trying to build our repertoire of stuff. And especially considering that shenanigans, the game, uh, took me like four years to do, uh, that took a lot of my time. So, but now we're kind of seeing what all we can do and, uh, experimenting with stuff, especially in terms of animation, because good Lord, I love animation. <laughs> Fair. So I guess one of the questions in regards to Mythos Makers that I have. So what made you guys come up with the name Mythos Makers? Uh, so Mythos is stories. Um, is it Greek or Latin? It's one of the two. We'll figure it out in post. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's basically like story makers. So, but Mythos is more interesting. Um, so it's a, we were, as we were coming up with names, like we were kind of figuring things out along those lines so that we ended up just landing on Mythos Makers eventually. So, so it was down to like two different things. One of them, the domain was taken and Mythos Makers, the domain wasn't. So it was like, perfect. <laughs> Take it while you can. Domain names are yeah. <laughs> no joke when it comes to, you know, when trying to really get a domain, domain name, blah, blah, blah. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm also a web dev. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Although there's some domains that you can surprisingly get a hold of, uh, I think I still have the domain uh, KermitSandwich.com somewhere. <laughs> fair, fair enough. So uh, that is a inside joke in the Proton John community. <laughs> fair. So I guess you know, kind of to <laughs> keep going into you know Mythos Makers. So what made you guys want to start the Shenanigans project or the Shenanigans game, I should say, now since it is released? Go check it out on Steam. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> check it out on Steam. It's probably on sale. You know what? It's going to be on sale when this episode comes out. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> go to the description. It'll be right that. there. <laughs> Steam service server is like, you cannot say these things. It's like, uh-oh. Oh, well. Um, yeah. They'll be fine. Um, I mean, kind of what started was that, like, the shenanigans characters were characters that I've had in my repertoire for a long time. So, like, Simon and Sabrina uh, were two characters that I've just had uh, for a very long time, since before high school, um, even for me. So, those were two characters I've had for a long time, and I've wanted to do something with them for a long time. And I also wanted to make a Rayman, or good lord, Rayman Legends uh, styled game. Uh, and so, eventually, just long time ago in 2020, I started learning Unity and started figuring out all that kind of stuff, and then start kind of beelining towards that direction. 
uh, doing avatars helped a lot in that regard. Because then I got to learn more about like how animation stuff work uh, within Unity. And then, I mean, it took a long time. There was a lot of things that happened in between that delayed it. But four years later, or yeah, four years later, uh, we ended up finishing the game. So it was uh, mostly initiative from me. And then just a lot of people that just really believed in uh, what I was doing. So the main person that I would shout out in that regard is Garden Wolf. Uh, she did an excellent job with, like, helping me with artwork, helping me with uh, design, like, up, like updating the designs for the characters and doing some different things to help out with that. Um, Bunny Girl 93 for voicing Sabrina. Lil Polly Bunny for voicing Ray. And then Dizzy Dummy for voice, voicing both uh, Wector and Beast. I had to try to remember who he voiced. He voiced two people. Um, and then Vanessa Wolf uh, for doing the music for the game. You know, absolutely. And it's, it's funny because uh, I believe two episodes ago on uh, episode 28, we also talked about Vanessa Wolf doing music. Uh, go, go Commissioner. She does amazing shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, go check out episode five, I think is the episode number. I could be wrong. Go check out her episode. Um, somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, it's a callback. Um, anyways, um, but no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a uh, it's really cool to see that you have so many amazing people, like, you know, willing to help you out with your, you know, your projects and stuff. That's really that's really cool. Yeah. It isn't even like just like them people who worked on shenanigans, a part of Mythos Makers as well. Um, in addition, there's a couple other people within the group as well that are like along the same boat. Like uh, Mr. Rain Gaming is an example of that. Uh, he's kind of an editor and like video producer type of person, but he's like anything you need me to do, like I'm all in for. And he's always like in. Um, like, whenever I'm, like, doing a video that's, like, hey, I'm talking about, like, this kind of thing, what's happening in my life and what's happening with Myth of Ving and all that, he's always there being, like, let's go, let's do it. ZM is the exact same way as well. ZM made me laugh one day because I was – I had talked about, like, goals and stuff that I had had uh, a while back, and he, he was just, like, you drop this king, and he and had a crown emoji in there. Um, and then also Matty uh, loves bubblegum is also another person that – is a part of Mythos Makers that's also just a huge help. Uh, I'm, she's starting to get into writing uh, more, and so I'm wanting her to do some story writing and stuff here soon as well. Hell yeah! No, that's what's up. You know, we we love to we love to see people grow like when it comes to their own passions and creations. So, like, mm -hmm. I it's really cool to hear that. Uh, hello everyone real quick just want to pause the episode real quick i want to thank you all so much for watching and, and i hope you're enjoying the content however i do have some amazing people to thank because they were so graciously to help fund the throne for the new setup we are currently over 40 percent as this episode is getting edited i do want to thank some individuals all of course the anonymous gifters but specifically i want to thank volcasect blep Emma Torch, Down Lyric, Asher Darora, KJD, Monk42, and Sonicman7708 for all the amazing generosity. You guys are absolutely a blessing, and I can't thank you enough for the amazing stuff. If you would like to, you know, help me over on Throne to help crowdfund the new setup to improve some of the content you see, uh, make sure to go check that out. But let's get back into the episode. Woo! So I guess, you know, one of the... It's Oh, it's ahead. kind of it's kind of a space for like growing a lot of people's um, creative skills and stuff, and trying to see what we can do to try and grow people's skills. And unfortunately, like right now, like most of the projects that we're doing is John Cody projects, which I would like for that not to be the case. You know, in the future, I would like to be able to have like a Maddie Loves Bubblegum project or a ZM Art project that. Uh, that is like either like a big animated project or something else. But like, unfortunately right now, like most of the projects are mainly John Cody projects just because like at the moment, like that's mostly what we can do for now. So we're not able to do a whole lot of crazy stuff. Like other than like myself and garden, we don't have very, like we don't have hardly any other like animators and we don't have like a whole lot of people. And 
unfortunately we can't we can't exactly pay people that well so we're most of us are like we're just doing this for free so that we can try and grow uh and expand our reach uh a lot further than where we are right now fair no and that's 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 really cool regardless Uh, you know because realistically right like a lot of big events and big like productions like yeah a lot of them are getting paid but it's the ones that are fueled by passion alone that show really like what they're yeah. about that's something i hard like truly believe in because you know it's one of the reasons you know why the podcast exists because i love hearing about people's passions i love to hear stories you know i love to you know hear about them talk about how people have lifted them up and you know helped them you know with whatever projects are on because realistically oh lord yeah that's how things i love hearing about stuff <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. how things should be. I love hearing about stuff like that and talking to people about, like, projects and stuff that they're working on. It's so much fun to listen to, like, someone talk about different, like, whatever they've been working on. Like, e- even, like, I was listening, I think, to uh, Mana a little bit not too long ago about, like, lore of uh, their character and all that. And I was like, that's so cool. So it was really neat to listen to. Um, oh, but, yeah, I mean, like, it's – I with a lot of the different people that are a part of Mythos Makers, I would not be – where i am like i think my ability to draw like my drawing skills i have to like i have to give credit to garden for helping me uh draw a lot better to her she she one day just sat me down it's like hey we're just going to start working on uh your drawing skills hardcore and we're going to get you improved and there was a lot of improvement with how she taught me and so it was just like a very clear difference between like my abilities like before and after uh she she started teaching me and so it's just like i i owe her so much for just helping uh increase my drawing abilities and stuff actually as well uh the fox that is in the mythos makers logo is drawn by garden that is uh her drawing so she did that one i mean it's very well done to say the least um oh it's wonderful i love it but you know i guess kind of you know so out of curiosity for like let's say because you kind of briefly explained um like how the game style is but what was like the story oh, yeah. of shenanigans like what what is shenanigans to say the least <laughs> so there's a lot <laughs> so the story of shenanigans is very basic um essentially the evil scientist dr wector uh stole uh sun energy from what is called the great uh sunflower it is a giant sunflower that helps sustain a lot of uh the life uh and nature that is around it and wector stole a lot of energy from it and so four nutcases i'm going to call them nutcases because they are nutcases um which are Simon and Sabrina, uh, these, those two characters are uh, brother and sister, and then Ray and Beast, which Ray is a, uh, is a witch cat, and Beast is kind of like her, not apprentice, more like a golem that like exists, that is like two brain cells, but damn, is he strong. <laughs> so that's about what Beast is, so... That's those characters. Simon is very crazy. Sabrina is also crazy. Both of them have violent tendencies. Um, And then they just go on an adventure to take down Wector and get back the sun energy. And it's just chaos. (laughs) So that's about what the story is. The name Shenanigans, so a lot of people have asked this before. And the name Shenanigans actually comes from a family story, um, which was, I think... I don't even remember how old I was. It, old enough to be a troublemaker. Um, I was like, me and my parents were at a doctor's office, and I was not, like, I was getting some kind of a shot. Either it was like a flu shot or something, and I would just not cooperate. I don't know why. I would just not cooperate, and eventually the doctor like either told my mom or mom and dad that like, is if he doesn't like. Uh, let us uh, give him the shot. We won't be able to, we'll have to reschedule and like figure this out later. And so eventually my dad just like sat down, looked at me, and was just like, John, if you don't stop this, sh- these shenanigans, 
or I'm going to have to bust your rear. And my mom had to restrain herself from laughing because who in the hell uses the word shenanigans in a serious situation, especially when disciplining your child? Who uses <laughs> shenanigans? So that word continued throughout my family for a long time. It was just something that we said to each other constantly. And so that just stuck with me for so long. And I was like, what should I call like the series or like, I, I guess like franchise, like that are associated with these characters that I've had for a long time. They're crazy. They're nutcases. Shenanigans works pretty damn well. <laughs> That's basically it. Fair. No, it's definitely interesting. I, I do 100% agree on the shenanigans. Like who? Yeah. Okay. Back in the day, <laughs> back in the day. Yes. It's said by a lot of people, but now that we're like in the 21st century, not no, in 2008. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Also not in 2008 either, but it's definitely, yeah, that's, that's hilarious. First and foremost. Like, Cause I could, I could definitely see my mom just kind of like covering her mouth. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah, i can only i can only imagine that's funny um <laughs> so i guess kind of one of the other questions in regards to shenanigans uh you know so there's all these different types of characters and whatnot and you know as you kind of said it's kind of based on like you know similar to the rayman legends gameplay so what kind of like what kind of made you want to go that direction with like the gameplay itself? I know you said you liked it, but was there any like particular reason? I uh, I liked Rayman Legends, and I wanted to try to emulate a little bit of that, not to a T, but to try a few different things with that. That at least felt like a um, that at least felt like a like set of rules or like a set of things that I could try to do. And then add on top of that as well. So I I like speedrun Rayman Legends for quite some time. And so that gameplay style just like is what I was attracted to the most. Like I, I really enjoyed that gameplay style so much. And so it's like, okay, I can try and emulate this and then do a few things differently uh, with it as well with these characters. So in regards, <laughs> in regards to like the development of shenanigans, what was like a like a memorable moment or like a really funny moment when it came to like the development side. Cause surely there's probably some stories in that regard when it comes to like, you know, the developing side, whether it's from the art side, the music side, <laughs> or just the game development side in general. I mean, it just, the blanket statement programming makes me pissed. <laughs> <laughs> just many calls that I've had with friends where it's just like, fuck, just trying to get something to work with it so there's several different things like that i'm like at, at one point i initially started using what's called the steam input api and it's like a set of like things that you, like you can use to be able to like use a controller and stuff then i realized it's terrible with keyboard so i had to switch from that to a, a unity built-in one um and then did a version of it that was modified um and so then and then i somehow got it to work it is very shoddily done, but it works. And that works for me. I'm going to quote Lixian TV. It, as long as it works, that's what matters. Matters. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Um, fair enough. The other, another really funny thing was um, the first time I got Dizzy's Wector Lines. Holy crap. They were perfect. Dizzy's Wector lines, like the voice that he does for Wector is so the I'm talking about like the evil scientist is just like yeah! like that voice. He did it so perfectly. And I was like I had listened to it in the car. Um and I just started laughing so hard and just so excited to hear his voice like go through there and i was just like this is so good i had to like re-listen to them again like multiple times because it was just like i enjoyed it so much it was so funny same thing with like the the cartoon that we're working on he sent in his lines for that too uh a little while back and i i 
again, I just started laughing because they were so good. So good. <laughs> yeah, I was like, voice actors can definitely, like, definitely make, like, crazy stuff. <laughs> um, having having the chance to work with a Disney's few. Disney's really good. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, having uh, the chance to work with voice actors, um, I bet is probably an amazing experience. Um, I've worked with, like, a very, uh... very few um, when it comes to, like, certain film projects um, that are in the works. Not my film projects. It's ones that I work with. Um, but <laughs> leak shit, leak shit, leak no, shit. No, no, I can't, shit. I can't, I can't leak shit. La- <laughs> later this year, maybe early next year, we'll Break see. Break your NDAs. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I was like, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a really crazy thing. You know, out of curiosity, um, what's like? Because you've had a few, quite a few people play the game. You know, a good. A good number. So I guess one of the questions I wanted to ask in that regard, um, what's like one of the most common things that people maybe like leave on a review or or maybe have told you in person? Like what what's like one of the yeah. most common things? I mean, a lot of people are like really have enjoyed the game so far. Um I've had like different people like I one person in particular like Fim QE. Um, they left a Steam review and they have like a lot of like really good stuff in terms of like pros and cons and stuff. And a lot of people that have played it really ended up enjoying it. And a couple of people ended up uh, speed running it uh, for some time. And so then I added like speed run timers and stuff like that into the game. Um, but a lot of people ended up starting uh, speed running. So like uh, Tay started speed running it. Uh, Nano, Nanobun TV speed, speed run it for a while. And then Sylvia Zora as well. Uh, did some speed runs as well of it. So some people started speed running it for some time. And so, but so far, like I've had pretty positive uh, reactions to it. I'd say the funniest thing uh, or the funniest one is Dole Dummy played it and he enjoyed it except for one particular level. And it's a level where you go to, like you only go up, like you're climbing like a, like a tower of like uh, bones and stuff in a, in a desert and you're climbing this tower, and Dull Dummy hated that level. And I watched him play that level, and God, was it funny. Was it so funny? <laughs> <laughs> Fair. I was going to say, um, no, I'm, first of all, like I've heard a few things for some people, and I've heard nothing but good things when it comes to shenanigans. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. For those that are listening, watching on YouTube or Spotify, or for there's any other platforms that these episodes get aired on, go check out Shenanigans. It's an amazing game. You won't be, you know, you won't be disappointed. If you're listening on Pandora for whatever reason. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm trying to get it on Pandora. It's just very hard to get it on Pandora. Um, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm Tuck trying to Nano. Get... Tuck to Nano. Bet. We'll do. Um, well, speaking, <laughs> speaking of Nano... Um, so you are actually one of the people on the perfect segue. Uh, perfect segue. Uh, you're actually one of the people on the Final Three Brain Cells podcast. So you know, first and foremost, for the people that may not know, yep. what is the Final Three Brain Cells podcast? It is me, Nanobun TV, and Gears Master all getting on VR chat and then sitting there for an hour and talking absolute nonsense. We are three ADHD. ADHD people who have no idea what's going on and uh, trying to do a podcast. And it's been going really well. It's really funny. Um, some of the different stuff. We had an episode the other day that came out um, dating the episode here. Uh, we had an episode the other day of a, a story of how Gears' uh, anvil that he had gotten, gotten stolen out of his garage. And it's like who just walks into someone's garage and says, hmm, what in here can I steal? Anvil. Whoop! And takes it away. That's insane. Out of all things. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing else was taken, just the anvil? Just the anvil. It's like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> That's <laughs> wild. Because those things aren't light either, nine times out of ten. They're not light. Like, why? <laughs> what? What? Uh, they heavy. Fair enough. So I guess you know, as as one of the three brain cells, like, what got you guys started in that regard when it came to that? 
Uh, Nano in particular, really. So the person who mostly show runs it is Nano. Uh, Nano does like all the producing and stuff like that. Nano was the sole editor for a while, but then he got uh, Gears to do some editing. I'm the person who does the least on the podcast. I show up, I be funny, I leave. That's it. <laughs> so that's my role. But Nano's a showrunner, um, and they wanted to do a podcast for a long time, and they, they were wanting to try and get it together. Um, and they particularly really wanted to do it with um, me and one other person. They wanted to try and do it. And Gears, um, at the time, Gears was kind of like not around online as much or anything like that. And so then once Gears, Gears started getting back into the community a lot more. And then Nana was just like, you're coming on here before you go away again. <laughs> Fair. And that was basically, I mean, like, that that's that's legit how I met Gears. I never met Gears before then until uh, we were basically doing a podcast together. And it was like, okay. So I, I am glad because me and Gears are able to, like, work off of each other really well. We both really, really enjoy to, like, derail things. Uh, Nana likes to be on topic. And so then me and Gears are like, let's just start talking about the the furry scale for about the next 20 to 30 minutes because it's funny to us. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, yeah, I'd say definitely. So with three brain cells in particular, um, you know, it, it kind of leans more onto like funny side, like storytelling side, you know? Um, so if you're definitely into that type of, you know, uh, podcast definitely go check them out as well i've seen a few episodes here and there because i'm i'm busy as all hell i wish i could i wish bro there's like five <laughs> podcasts now that like i'm trying to like catch up on because there's so many great podcasts out there but if you like comedy and funny storytelling definitely go check them out it's fantastic when you listen to us we'll have a bingo out for you you'll have a bingo card we're gonna be hitting a lot of things on it now when you look at the bingo card it may scare you initially on some of the things that are on the bingo card. You may look at it and be like, why is 9-11 one of the squares? Don't worry. You'll find out eventually. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. Um, but, yeah, I was going to say, it's definitely, it's definitely crazy, like, how much you do, like, when it comes to different memes of media, you know, whether it's, you know, Unity creation with avatars or, you know, uh, comics uh, or games uh, or just podcasts in general. Like, it's, it's crazy to see, it's like, to kind of learn how much exactly you do. Um, so, kudos, first and foremost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot of management of projects to do. Like right now I'm kind of having to manage um, working on a uh, game project and being like, do I want to try and see if I can do more of this now or should I just wait until later so that I can get the animation done? Uh, which it, right now I'm leaning towards just trying to get the animation done because part of me is also just like, I don't want to program for a little bit. <laughs> fair valid i that sounds like the average procrastination tactic that a mm -hmm. lot of creators have i get that <laughs> do i want to do this now well, it's, also do this just later? Like, it's like it's like why am i trying to like why am i trying to like at the same time do meme avatars and the animation and another game project uh all at the same time and trying to manage that it's like i'm gonna push one back and it's gonna be the one that i know i can push back a lot more because more work has been done on the cartoon than uh, this game project. So it's basically like, it's basically just started. <laughs> so I'm a leak shit. It's a multiplayer game. Good Lord. Multiplayer is very interesting to work on. <laughs> Fair. And I'm not using Unity because Unity can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. No, that's valid. Godot all the way. <laughs> Fair. I was going to say with that, um, uh so you know you're also a um a comics person as well um you know i kind of yes. i kind of wanted to touch base on that a little bit uh because unfortunately we're actually almost out of time already but i did want to touch base on it a we little bit go over yeah, <laughs> true i could go over realistically what's a what's a few couple hours of editing work um but, but um so out of curiosity it ain't my problem right right 
Don't hit yourself, post editor. I know I'm I'm doing things. <laughs> um, hey, more time for me to talk about me. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. glad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I'm kidding. But uh, <laughs> but uh, so I was gonna say with that. So what got you first and foremost? What got you into like doing comics? Uh, I ended up developing a character that I really, really enjoyed in the form of Sierra Bell. And a lot of my inspiration comes from two different places uh, for it. Uh, the first one is, of course, One Piece, because, dear lord, I am probably the biggest One Piece fan in VRChat. Um, or at least within the VRChat uh, streaming side. Um I am a huge One Piece fan. I know so much about One Piece, and I could probably uh, talk about it. There's a video out on YouTube that is a six-hour video on One Piece, and I've watched it three times, and I'm probably going to watch it a fourth time here soon. <laughs> Fair. Um, That's crazy. And then the other inspiration for it was Full Metal Alchemist. Um, I had just, like, I had recently, like, gotten into that... Um, through my uncle, actually, I'd gotten into that and watched uh, both the original anime and Brotherhood. And then I'd also started reading the manga for it as well. So eventually, like, uh, Sierra Bell was a character that I was developing uh, whilst I was in high school. And I did an initial uh, run of it for a while um, on Webtoons. And then I ended up going back and... Actually, no, I didn't do it on Webtoons. I did it on, like, a weird personal website that no longer exist. Um, and then eventually I ended up switching over to Webtoons for a while, uh, doing it on there. And then I just went back and redid the story um, on Webtoons to go back and kind of improve a few things. And at this point in time, like the entire series is planned. It's just like I, every now and then, like I end up just getting into this weird like space of like, ended up like procrastinating on it and then eventually like recently i've just started like going back in and being like all right now i really want to continue this series because i think about like the series and sierra bell and uh the different characters and story ideas and stuff way too much to where i'm going to just explode as if i don't like get back into it and it's also like it also ends up being a comfort thing for me whenever i go back and do it um I think we're not going to talk about about it here. I might talk about it somewhere in the future. But there's been a lot of like recent life events that's happened to me that uh, have been really stressful and really um, intense and really like a lot for me to like handle. And so eventually, I just got back into drawing it, and it was just a comfort thing. So hopefully, by the time this comes out, some more episode or chapters uh, come out with the series. But it's it's kind of like a series and a character and a story that I really enjoy, um, and I'm really wanting to push it more a little bit further. Something that I'm really wanting to do at some point actually is, I think I've talked about this before. I don't remember where, but I at some point I want to do a Sierra Bell film, and I know exactly what it would be. I know exactly the story, and I almost know exactly like beat for beat what would happen in it. It's just at some point in time and this i would just have to do it like once i'm able to get more people involved once i'm able to get more stuff involved then i can just do it and then um and then yeah i mean that's that's a future project so that's something that at least something that's like i really want to do this i really want to do this but now's not the time <laughs> no that's that's fair there's always a good time and good place for projects like that um so yeah no that's really cool though um yeah with sierra bell and like a lot of other things so like with sierra bell and shenanigans and other series and ideas and projects that i'm planning like i'm probably going to be working on all of this stuff for about like the next 16 to 20 years of my life like that's how much like stuff projects and stuff that i've got planned in my head at least so it's I'm in it for the long haul. You're not going to get rid of me. I'm you, you get you people get to deal with me. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Fair. Um but yeah, no, it's that's really cool that you're wanting to like make a full like film off that. That's that's really cool. And I feel like a lot of like yeah. 
you know, people who make comics and stories, that's what they dream to do is to make it full length, you know, feature film of like their yeah. stories and, you know, et cetera. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Even with that, like it's the way that I would end up doing, it would be like a one piece style thing to us. Like one piece films are like their own contained stories. Um, so then like for the Sierra Bell film that I'm thinking about right now, it would just end up being its own, uh, one-off contained story. It wouldn't be like the overall story because the overall story, Oh, you can't fit that into film. Um, but it would be like its own self-contained thing of just like, this is this one, um, event or this one thing that happened in this particular like area that involves Sierra Bell. So that's kind of the idea that I have at least for that. So that's something that I'm really, really like wanting to do at some point. And I'm like, Oh, I really want to do it. I have all the ideas laid out. I even have some character designs laid out. Just not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely wish you the best of luck in that. Cause that's a, it's a pretty big dream for that. Um, yeah. yeah, best of luck. Like I, I'll be rooting for you. I am, I am very much described as a very ambitious individual, and I, I heavily agree with that because I look at some of the things that I'm wanting to do, and I'm like, yeah, that's a lot, but damn it, I'm just going to push as much as I can to do it, and just gather people around me that are also passionate about doing projects, and I mean, so far I'm doing pretty good in that regard so i again i with a lot of different things like especially shenanigans in particular the game um it took a long time to do because you know i mostly did a lot of the animation work and i did most of the programming and a lot of stuff i had help with artwork and i had help with some animation work but like a lot of it was a lot of support from people being like this is great this is really cool and a lot of support from people who just believed in me. Like, that's it. Like, that's what really keeps me going is, like, a lot of people who uh, will chime in and be like, hey, you are doing really great. Or, like, you are doing some really cool stuff. And we believe in, like, your vision and what you're doing. So, I it's, like, to everyone, like, who is a part of Mythos Makers, like, I so much appreciate you people. Like, it's, I, it is insane how far we've been able to go with just so little so no that's that's fair um that's fantastic I, <laughs> fair um well i was gonna say first and foremost john dude this was an amazing like time like i that this yeah. is this, this a blast i i want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast anytime i think again anytime i can talk about myself i am more than happy <laughs> <laughs> I have to fill in the captain role somehow of being a narcissist, so I I play that up as much as I can. <laughs> Fair. Even though Maddie will Maddie Maddie will confirm this. <laughs> fair no that's that's fair i mean realistically i've i've talked to you outside of stuff and you are not that you know you're pretty you're pretty great when it comes to like you know talking about just stuff in general too but yeah don't don't sell yourself short as a narcissist, <laughs> jackass. <laughs> I mostly do it to be funny. I mostly do it to be funny. It's either like it's either like narcissistic. Like I feel like sometimes my comedy, like whenever I do like improv improvisational stuff, it like it's very leans into like how Conan does it. Where it's like it's super narcissistic or super self deprecating. <laughs> it's one or the other. It's just the just the metronome just going back and forth between both. Yeah. <laughs> um we i can't keep up with this what is happening here it's, <laughs> it's one or the other but it's it keeps going back and forth it's from one extreme to the other i don't understand <laughs> is he confident or is he like not confident i don't know what's happening <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh dude. john this has been a blast i want to thank you so much for coming on um but yeah. before before we go thank you for having me of course yeah but before we go i do want to give you the chance um to let the audience know where they can find you uh you know you mythos makers or anything that you're working on uh mm -hmm. but the floor is yours take it away yep uh, you can find uh, my personal YouTube channel on youtube.com slash at John Coday. 
Um, you can also uh, find my webcomics here about the Magic's Curse uh, on MythosMakers.com uh, slash comics slash Sierra Bell. Um, as well as my Twitch streams on twitch.tv slash uh, John Coday. Uh, and that's mostly about it. Most of my other links and stuff uh, are on those things. Well, I'll say, do you want to give a shameless plug of shenanigans while you're here? <laughs> you might as well. Oh, yeah, there's that thing. Uh, shenanigans is on Steam. Uh, like I said, it's probably going to be on sale. Uh, I don't know how much. It's probably going to be like 75% off. Uh, at this time, so you can find shenanigans on Steam. Uh, you can find a few other projects that we've uh, done on Steam, including uh, a, a game that is set in the Sierra Bell world called DMN7, as well as another game uh, that I did, um, hilariously enough, out of spite against a community college I was attending at the time, because I was like, I could do programming better than you people. So another game that I made at the time uh, that is on Steam called Lab Rat. I <laughs> that's fair enough <laughs> I'll say all the links uh, will be down in the description which means you gotta send them to me um, but all of them will be in the description as well as on the screen no throughout. I have to do things damn it <laughs> <laughs> gotcha um, but yeah no thank you again for coming on the podcast this is an absolute blast it definitely did not feel like an hour, over an hour so like I, I love when no, that I happened. didn't like Dude, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It, it means the world to me. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no problem. Go check out. Enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, go check out John Cote. Go check out Mythos Makers, Shenanigans, all the amazing projects we talked about. Uh, links will be in the description. Um, but with that, I do want to thank you do all. Do not fear the fact that I am a furry. Fair. Although, do be aware that there may be a pipe bomb in your mailbox. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but with that, ladies Can and I gentlemen, say that? Ah, it's fine. We'll, we'll we'll throw it in there. But, <laughs> ladies, gentlemen, everybody inside and outside the ballpark, this has been it for episode thirty of the Nova Notes podcast. I do want to thank you all so much for watching. Uh, make sure to you know if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment down below. Hey, if you try out shenanigans, tell us what you like about shenanigans. You know, John will probably be, you know, in there somewhere, you know, checking, see if, you know, he goes check it out. And uh, oh, yeah. according to him, it's going to be on I'll sale. I'll be checking when, the comment section. Uh, so according <laughs> to him, it's going to be on sale when this episode comes out. So, hey, you have more of a chance to go check out the game. Go, go, go check out the game. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but with that, uh, first of all, thank you. That's really cool of you to do, by the way. I'm going <laughs> to segue that real quick. Um, but if you are coming back to watch some of the up episodes... You know, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, I want to thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care and peace. Good night, everybody. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nova's Club.